All right, welcome in, welcome back. As I was just saying, I should get some kind of product endorsement here with these um, foam rollers. And what I am gonna be bringing in is the Thermagun. All right, I've mentioned this before, I've talked about having it, I've had it for about maybe two months now. Really been trying it out. Um, again, this is not a, an endorsement of this product at all, but I've tried three other ones and uh, yeah, this one's a little, quite a bit more than the other two, but it is honestly worth it. I have used this thing literally everywhere on everything. Uh, I've done uh, treatments with it um, and I've used it on clients and it just, it comes with about five different heads. You can clean them, everything. And this thing just is worth the money because it just bangs it out, bangs it out, bangs it out, bangs it out. And I was wondering whether, because I use it so much with the charge go down, it hasn't. Um, I'm gonna really put it to the test now this weekend, um, well, this rest of this week with my elbow and see if I can get some results there. But with my back and my hip, tremendous. Um, it is a little bit loud. But other than that, not that loud actually. And I'm gonna go to work on my elbow later on today trying to keep it half bent and not have it vibrate so much. I just want the soft um, vibrations, not the hard. Ooh, and there it is, right there. All right, so just a little bit of a uh, um, recommendation for you guys, for anybody especially that has the, um, what I found for my people that suffer with uh, carpal tunnel and any of the range of motion issues that go on with the forearm, a lot of this muscle is over, over, overdeveloped and overworked. So we need to break the muscle down. This is a godsend for you guys. I don't even have that issue at all because I hardly ever type. I'm not a big computer person at all. Um, and the minimal work I do, my hands get a great, great, great deal of rest. Mine is mostly from a gripping um, weights and things like that. So we have the same issue, just I, I don't have the impact of it. You guys have the impact in this constant arch. I just have the like tennis uh, elbow that you would call because of just the repetition of it. So both of us need it. Um, I normally, you know, people that are do this normally don't suffer from the, the things that you guys do and don't need them. The muscle doesn't get atrophied as much. So um, it's just something for us to keep performance going. But for you guys, it is something, it's a, it's a lifeline. So this would be a honest, and the way that I love about this one is that it's more uh, ergonomically held in the hand. You can literally, it's set up to rest. If you look at some of the videos and uh, tutorial when you buy it, it'll show you that you rest this here and you use that base so that you don't wear out the other hand. Even when you do it like on your back, it'll show you how to rest it here. So that you don't wear your your uh, your hand out or your back or your shoulder, so you don't get something fatigued while you're trying to relieve something. So it's all set up so that it'll be ergonomic for you when you're using it. All right, the whole thing is set up like that for you to rest on your base of your arm and then for it to do its job. Okay, so. Just for me, I'm so glad they made this piece of equipment because I don't know what I was doing without it. Well, I was going to a chiropractor, what I was doing without it. I've literally substituted a human out for this. The reason being, I still need to go to the chiropractor and be truly adjusted. But at two o'clock in the morning when I'm feeling uncomfortable, I can't drive across town and say, hey, wake up chiropractor and, and adjust my back. I can go downstairs and go grab this and get some relief. So that's the caveat of having something like that. All right, now let's move on to our stretch of the day and get into our um, some relief. Because this elbow, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm gonna, you know, I keep it 100 with you guys. I am gonna show you the progress with this thing with that elbow. Because when I touched on that 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 uh, tender spot, see, I can't even feel it with my hand. I can't even feel it. But as soon as it touched it, it was like, oh, I can't even feel it at all with my hand. Like I, there's no pressure. But as soon as that thing, touched, that machine touched it, I was like, oh, you see, I can't. Nothing. I can feel it when I move, but I can't pinpoint it. Oh, well, maybe a little bit. But that is the sharer. And I am getting today or this, yeah, probably today I'm gonna go and grab it. 
I am going to go and grab the black version of this, the firmer version, not as firm as this one. And I might even replace this one because I've been used it so long. I think it honestly has a tiny, tiny, tiny crack in it. I can't feel it, it doesn't change the performance, but I can hear it. So um, my uh, nieces, nephews and uh, grandbabies come over and play with that thing and uh, probably broke it. Yeah, I said it, I just look like this. All right, ah, let's go to the stove. It's a mo. <laughs> All right. On your back, on your glutes, and we're just going to go piece by piece, each position, each position. So I'm going to start at the lower back, all the way down. <sighs> Taking that breath, relaxing. And then laying on down. Oh, yeah. Trying to keep that pelvis on the ground with that arch. The body might start to go, ah, but we've done this enough that the body should be pretty acclimated. Turn that head left to right. That's all you got to do to activate the left and the right side of the body. That's all you got to do, like riding a motorcycle. All you do is turn your head for the passenger. If I'm making a right, you just turn your head right. Don't lean. Just turn your head right. Ooh, wait, or left. That is so much more intense than it looks. I just try to make it look easy, but I try the truth out, guys. Oh, that's intense. Just coming and arching that back and letting it relax. I mean, it feels terrific, but it's pretty intense. I'm kind of over this thing, given in the middle. All right, let's go again. Now it's going to get a little easier. And you have a choice of keeping your, I like my rib cage to arch up like this. So I get that stretch of the, of the chest as well. Um, when you let your feet down, to me, it seems like my chest, my chest drops a little bit. So I like to keep my feet up under me. It feels like I get a, uh, my chest is arch, arched even more. Get that really deep breath in there. And all that new oxygen in my lungs. <sighs> that feels amazing. Love all that new air. All right, that's why bike riding is so awesome. It's cleansing that whole circulatory system with a nice, heavy, vigorous bike ride. All right, and again, arch down. Oh, crack, crackity crack right there, guys. And I'm below my shoulder blades right now. So I'm at the beginning of my thoracic. Let's see if I extend out. Oh, I got him. Yes, extend out. Oh, not so much. That was held over from yesterday, guys. Remember? Oh. And up. Oh, that was the business right there. That's like my favorite part. And then right on the shoulder blades now. We're below them. We're going to go on them and then we're going to go above them. So we're right on them right now. This is probably the easiest of all right here besides to getting to the neck. This is opening up the heart. You can literally feel the heart. Love that one, that's opening up the heart. We opened up the chest and lungs, the lungs, and then we come up and we come right across that chest, right at the back of the shoulder blades, right it come, comes across to the heart. Oh. oh. My brother had a saying back in the day. <laughs> I'm the youngest of six. 
And uh, my older brother would say, I'm going to punch you so hard in your arm that you're going to limp. <laughs> and they say he would punch me in my back and give me a heart attack. <laughs> I know that's silly, but I just wanted to say that because you know your chest, your heart is so is in the middle of your of your chest. It's that it's it's no nor more in the front nor in the back. Uh, right smack dab in the middle. And we were watching something. He figured that hey, I can punch you either in your chest or your back. See what big brothers think about. All right. Oh, and up. I gotta lose the hat now. Lose the visor. Oh. Just rotating on the neck now. Adjust the neck. Only using the weight of the head right now to do it. Oh. There's some left and right. Oh, we. Oh, right there. There's a prop child right there. All right, now hands go up. Feet come underneath us and then we lift the pelvis. And I'm not rolling yet. I'm rotating with my neck completely braced on the foam roller right now. Completely braced on there with my shoulders locked in, protecting my neck. And first roll right here. Sitting up right on it, pushing my elbows right behind the foam roller. Ah, sitting up right at my beneath my shoulder blades again. Coming back from the neck up to the thoracic. Ah, now working my way back down backwards with all that pressure relief. I feel absolutely nothing right now. Now what I'm doing is I'm crossing my legs, so I'm stretching each side for 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Put that leg down, cross here. Ooh, wee, nice stretch. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then a little cat and cow in each position. Really working that lumbar on each side. It's imperative that we target it. I'm learning this. Oh, that was intense. Rolling it back in. Now I'm keeping the feet crossed. Note that I'm keeping the feet crossed now as I'm rolling back down. I'm pushing everything out. So now I'm going left to right, cleaning up all of that. Uh, static, oh yes, static energy, oh boy, oh boy, With that leg cross for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, oh wait, that was a business right there, and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Ooh. Whew. That was the business for real, for real. Now we're coming right up under the hip. It's the most difficult one. It was challenging, I should say. Oh, cross. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come back to the other side. That is so very much pressure. Everything has worked down. We're looking for now to take this out. Unacceptable. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, ho, 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 right at my coccyx, right at the below my tailbone. Uh, oh, I actually feel pretty good. Ah, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <sighs> Pressure has almost moved completely into the hips now. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. I am not even gonna attempt to try to roll up on that one. Ah, my back is fully ah, gentle, gentle, gentle now. No jarring movements. Understand that your back was compacted like this. We have released the back from compaction, right? So the back is right here right now, floating. All right, now we want to put it, keep it on an even surface right now. This is a great time. Not great, but this is where a lot of people get hurt if they would come out of this movement. And I speak on this all the time. No jarring movements right now. What we're going to do is we're going to scooch over to one side. Understanding where that back is. What we have to do is set it back here. And we're going to release those hips. Keep the feet stacked. Just like that. Keeping those shoulders, see where my shoulders are? Flush on the mat. Feet are stacked. And here, cat and cow. Takes that top leg, feel that coming across that hip, stretching that hip out, taking that pressure out. We move everything down. Now we're pushing it out through the glute and the hamstring, out through the heel. So that's why we wanna come up. Taking the rest of that pressure out. Now you feel it, it's right there. You literally feel that pressure right there, right? We have been moving it. Now let's move it out. Bring that leg in, bring that right leg across, holding it with the left hand, bring it in there. Extend the bottom leg. Both shoulders are still flush on the ground. Arch up and bow down. Arch up and bow down. Arch up. And bow down. Look at that pain. I mean, look at that pressure. Almost gone. Now I can arch in really exaggeratively. Look at that. Almost completely gone. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Bring that leg back in. Lay the top leg down. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, a little arch and bow, a little tuck. Bring that leg up. Beautiful, absolutely nothing in the hip now. Nothing in the hip. Slide it out. Now you want to lead out with this leg and bring this one up. Sliding over. Use that mat. Beautiful, both feet. Both knees come down. Support that. Make sure that back is straight. Pushing that pressure, last bit of that pressure that was here, pushing right down into that glute, into that hip. You can feel it moving. That's why we arch and bow. You can feel it. Just leaving that. Pushing it down, pushing it down. That 
pressure whittling away. That's nowhere to go. Take that foot, slide it, and bring it up. By the time we get that, we get this leg up here, that pressure and that stretch is like, oh God, we don't have nothing to do but to give him nothing but relief at this point. All right. Both of those shoulders are flush on the ground. I can feel it. It's just gone right here through that lower lumbar, vanished out of the hip. Possibly in the glute now, we can roll that out. Oh, and then bring that leg in. Down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. By the time you get that leg back up there, there's just nothing left. Just nothing. Slide it out gently. Back stacked. And we come up. Now, how do we get back up safe from here? I always tell my clients, never up, always back. And you'll see what I mean like that, what I mean by that. Roll over to your stomach. You never go up, you always go back. And from back, you're safe, resetting the back. Cat and cow. Up to cat and cow. And then straight down into cobra. God, I did not tuck in good, did I? Sorry about that, guys. Thought I tucked in good. Sorry about that. And then straight down from there into Cobra. Come on. All right, got to jam there for a second. All right, guys. So after you've come back up safely, we're gonna go into Cobra, put that back down. So now you've made the transition, you've turned your body completely around safely. You come down from never up, you always back first here, child's pose one, with the glutes in the air. And you'll feel that remaining pressure there in the hips, just a tiny, tiny bit left. Possibly none, but if it, even if you got some, we're about to get rid of that right now. Come up, drop that pelvis, push the chin to the sky. Into Cobra. Bringing that belt buckle down. Oh, give him the left look. And a right look. Now we're gonna bring the feet together, standing cobra, crossing the feet. So I'm crossing my um, left over my right first so that that left stretch, ah, is the bee's knees. Oh. Now I'll take the, that was the left over the right. Now I took the right over the left. Let's do that again. All right, you guys. Take on the dog.
That was our um, hip release, back release, upper and lower lumbar. All right, guys, from me to you, get yourself a thermogun and always with the foam rollers. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon.